This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We are a Christ-centered family of God's people, growing in faith, caring for each other, bringing others to Christ, and ministering to the needs of our changing community and world. This morning I, I picked a single verse. It's very simple, easy to remember, and a simple message, but yet I think it's profound. If we practice the words of this message, we'll save ourselves a lot of grief, and who knows the ripple effect on the good that can come from it. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 13. The Apostle Paul says to us, And as for you, brothers and sisters, never tire of doing what is good. Again, never tire of doing what is good. Never tire of doing what is good. May God bless this reading of Scripture. I came upon this verse by accident, or I think by accident, maybe God directed me there. I was thinking of a verse that precedes it by three, verse number 10. Uh, and I, I thought about the other verse for Labor Day Sunday, but did not use it. And that verse says, those that do not work shall not eat. Them that don't work, don't eat. And uh, Paul was not saying that uh, if you don't do work, you should not eat at all. He meant people who are able to work, but chose instead to let others carry the burden in their place. And specifically, he was referring to people that thought Jesus was coming back any moment, so they were going to stop working and just look to the sky and wait for him to arrive. Unfortunately, it was worse than that. Now, Jesus said we don't know the time or hour. His coming will be a surprise when we least expect. And what he hopes to find us doing is going about our work, whether that's uh, mowing the lawn, planting a tree, washing the dishes, feeding the dog or the cat. We should just be doing our daily routine and, and doing the work of the Lord when he finds us, not sitting around uh, and not doing anything. But these people were worse than that. They weren't just sitting around while others carried the load. Verse 12 says, or verse 11, We hear that some among you are idle and disruptive. They are not busy. They are busy bodies. So Paul is saying they're not only not working, they're stirring the pot, stoking the fire by gossiping and slurring and slandering and, and causing disruption in the church. He said they shouldn't be doing that. They should be doing their part their work in a, to be a good witness. That's the context of this morning's scripture, verse 13, to never tire of doing what is good. Now, it's a wonderful way to begin the day by asking what good can I do this day and thinking about it. It's a wonderful way to end the day to think about what good did I do this day and a good way to measure the success of the day. Paul says never tire of doing good. We can never do too much good. Now, in as much as it depends on us, we should always try to approach and do the good thing, the thing that's loving and kind and caring in response to whatever the world throws at us. But that doesn't mean that there aren't times where we need to call 911 or take someone to court or defend uh, ourselves or a loved one. Sometimes we have to uh, act forcefully to respond to what someone's doing when it's a, an emergency. But for the most part, most of the time, we should step back and think of a constructive, good response to what, whatever the world's throwing at us. In Romans 12, 21, Paul says, Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So whatever the situation, if at all possible, do good. Don't try to out-argue someone. Do the good thing instead. What is the best way to get even? Do good. Let, leave that up to God. Your reputation is tarnished by, tarnished by false rumors. Well, your reputation is simply what people think about you, right or wrong. So do good anyway. As someone said, character is who you truly are, and that's what matters. So do good. You are depressed. Do good. It will take your mind to a happier place. A helpful tool to not lose your cool or not give up is to do good. Your response to whatever happens, if at all possible, do good. Now that doesn't mean that it's always easy. 
recently I was at the Chamber of Commerce breakfast and the uh, county sheriff was our speaker and he talked about at first how police officers sometimes make fun of firefighters and say well they're just all at the station house making dinner and playing board games well we're out here doing the real work but then he referred to the fire just down the hill from us in the Hemet area that's raging and he says at times like this our firefighters have his full respect and appreciation and support and he talked about how the police officers were backing up our firefighters uh, while risking their lives and and some are risking the loss of their home and everything else now 21 years ago today as people were going down the stairs in the Twin Towers and out the doors the firefighters and police officers were going in the building and up the stairs to save some and we remember them and we appreciate their sacrifice and this day we remember their loved ones who always miss them but especially on a on an anniversary as this one is someone once said kill them with kindness I was thinking as Christians we could transform that and say convert them with kindness through love and understanding and gentleness and goodness we might find a better way we're never to stop doing good we're never to tire of doing good as Christians sometimes we fight losing battles because they are right to do good when it doesn't seem to matter but our ultimate victory in Christ is assured and we are called to be faithful whether or not it is successful so when you're considering what to do how to respond whether to yell and scream or give up and walk away or lash out in some fashion do good never stop doing good and never grow tired of doing good if nothing else God knows and Jesus knows and what matters more than that and who knows but maybe through your love and understanding and goodness something or someone may change it happens every day sometimes it's a miracle but when we act with goodness as our response to the world's wickedness we open up all sorts of possibilities for God to work in and through so what good can you do today this week or this year next month uh, is our wheelchair month we've we've sent over 2,000 wheelchairs around the world so that's one good thing people can do during the month of October in response to each situation when we're doing good we're the most like God and we'll never regret it so oftentimes the world and others mean certain things for evil God can turn them around for good and we can be a vessel for God to work through and in when we take the time to think is it possible for me to respond in a way that's loving and kind and good? Most of the time, we can. We'll keep ourselves out of trouble by not flying off the handle. And who knows, the ripple effect or the change of someone's life trajectory because we took the time to do the loving and good thing. And whatever we do, we do for the Lord. And it's never in vain. Amen. And God bless you.